Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles with a special edition post tropical storm Dorian. At 10 a.m. Tuesday, 27th August, the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, gave the all clear for the resumption of normal day to day activity as tropical storm Dorian moved away from St. Lucia. The all clear followed the discontinuation of the tropical storm warning for St. Lucia at 8 a.m. by the Med Services. St. Lucia began feeling the effects of Tropical Storm Dorian at approximately 2 a.m. Tuesday. Acting Director of NEMO, Doreen Gustav, explains the difference between the discontinuation of a Tropical Storm warning and the all clear. When a discontinuation is given, the country is not in an all clear. As long as there is a shutdown, the discontinuation does not determine an all clear. As soon as the discontinuation is given, the assessment teams, our first responders, are um, sent out there to ensure that conditions are right, that there are no hazards out there. Um, power lines, for instance, are not down. The roads are passable and so on. So this is what happens after the tropical watch or tropical um, warning has storm warning has been discontinued despite the national shutdown at 6 p.m monday 26 august and the many advisories urging members of the public to remain indoors individuals still ventured out putting their lives at risk members of the royal st lucia police force were out ensuring that the public heeded the advisories when persons decide to go out there in spite of a shutdown um, notice by the government they are putting their lives at risk. And also the first responders, um, the EMT, the police, you are putting other person's lives, not just yours, other person's lives as, at risk. So we're asking as soon as a shutdown has been issued, we're asking persons to stay indoors. Stay indoors until the all clear has been given. Better communication and enforcement of the law is needed in times of disaster. So says Deputy Chief Fire Officer George Victorin in the aftermath of Tropical Storm Dorian. Victorin says that while it is a work in progress, officials need to work more closely with the public to ensure that all are kept safe during such times. Most persons adhered to the warning, but uh, we saw that early this morning, um, after six uh, minutes to seven, there were quite a few persons um, on the road, motorists, as well as persons walking at some of the towns and, and, and cities, which was um, not advisable at all, because um, we were still on the shutdown, the altar had not been given, and those persons were putting themselves at unnecessary risk. The Deputy Chief Fire Officer also reported that there were no major reports as a result of Tropical Storm Dorian. No major reports relating to the storm per se. We had a fire at Viewfort, which was a major fire, but uh, that was not related or directly related to the storm. But uh, all in all, it was very quiet, our normal ambulance responses. And uh, as we speak, we are still very much on alert. Um, all our staff are still uh, on duty waiting, you know, uh, to, to see how things develop. And the St. Lucia Electricity Services Limited, Lucilec, says the electricity system held up extremely well during the passage of Tropical Storm Dorian. There was no damage to any of the major electricity infrastructure, such as the transmission lines, substations, or any of the generation plants. Although the period the country was under Tropical Storm warning, there was only one call of a fault in the south, and two calls of area faults were received in the north Tuesday morning. In its statement, Lucilec reminded customers to trim trees on their properties, especially at the beginning of the annual hurricane season. This will not only reduce potential damage to customers' properties, but will also help to minimize damage to electricity infrastructure from falling trees and branches and prevent power outages in some instances. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney says he is thankful that the island was spared from Tropical Storm Dorian. Speaking to NTN Nightly via telephone, Honorable Shastney highlighted the government's proactive approach to disaster preparedness. 
as a government, we have taken on the position that we are going to be in a constant state of preparedness. Um, that these storms will come. Um, they are very unpredictable. So the fact is this storm could have easily um, strengthened um, even from the time it left Barbados to San Lucia. Uh, we've seen videos of what took place in Martinique. Uh, so I'm just very, very grateful um, that we were spared. So I think that the attitude of deciding to be in a state of preparedness and then making those resources available um, is the right one, and, and we're seeing that it's paying off. I mean, so simple things like waiting for um, the hurricane season to try to check the radios of Nemo. Uh, Nemo's radios have not been working for so long. Um, so for the whole year, um, we've been fixing up the repeaters and getting that system uh, fully operational. Satellite phones, and we now have three satellite phones, and every year we're trying to add one or two more um, satellite phones into the system. Uh, the police now having their own communication system. Uh, all these things are, are helping to strengthen um, our ability to be able to handle and cope um, a, a, a fallout from a, from, a, from a natural disaster. The Prime Minister also emphasized the importance of engaging the public as partners in disaster mitigation and management. Honorable Chastney says Tropical Storm Dorian also presented lessons for the government. There was a video that was circulated of some homeless people, we think, um, in the CDC areas that were um, sleeping outside um, past the curfew time. Um, I've asked the Ministry of Equity, um, NEMO themselves, the police, and the city council to look into this because that should not happen. I mean, there are a lot of um, emergency sites that shelters that people could have gone to. I, I didn't hear one report of any shelter being um, over-occupied. Um, so the fact is it really comes down to a point of enforcement at this point. And we've just spent a, a lot of money in helping uh, fix up the facilities at, at, at Cornerstone, which is right there in Viji. So again, um, that there has not been a lack of facilities for these people to go to. It's just really the different agencies must take ownership of it. From a communications perspective, um, this year, we um, had an NTN and GIS based at the NEMO facility and preparing the information um, and sending it out to the different um, uh, uh, information channels, so the, the different TV stations and radio stations. Um, several radio stations were on all night, and one TV station um, did a really good job of, of staying, staying, staying on air. So we have to review whether, in fact, that worked. I know that there was... Um, an instance this morning where uh, the Met Office indicated that we were no longer on a, 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 a tropical storm watch. Some people mis, mis, unfortunately misinterpreted that as being as an all clear, um, but we were able to make some very quick phone calls. So the key is to continuously review our communication strategy to make sure that it's, um, it's on point. And that was Prime Minister Alan Shastney. You're watching a special edition of the NTN Nightly, post-tropical storm Dorian. The world's climate is changing, and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change. And everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms, and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Welcome back. The St. Lucia's Solid Waste Management Authority has informed that the Garbage Collection Service 
will resume from Wednesday, August 28, 2019. The authority encourages the public to place waste out only on the scheduled collection day for their respective communities. The Iglo Sanitary Landfill and the Viewford Solid Waste Management Facility will, however, reopen to the public from 12.30 p.m. until 6 p.m. Users of the disposal facilities are asked to exercise caution and to follow instructions given by site staff given the wet conditions at this time. Residents who missed the Tuesday collection due to the passage of Tropical Storm Dorian are informed that the service will resume on the next collection day for the community. The authority urges affected residents to continue to store waste on their premises until then. The hotel sector, like the rest of interest on island, was spared any damage as a result of Tropical Storm Dorian. The chief executive officer of the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association, Nurani Aziz, gave us an overview earlier on. The hotels have got uh, preparedness plans that came into full effect once the, 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 we, we realized from the authorities that we were expecting the storm to pass over St. Lucia. And that protocol seeks to ensure more than anything else the safety of our guests and our team members. Um, we continue to dialogue and exchange information throughout the night, and this kept everyone in the loop as to the reports and what was happening, what was going on, not only in St. Lucia, but at, in, in our neighboring um, territory in Barbados. And um, essentially, there was really seamless exchange and, and, and communication and information back and forth. And uh, we were really delighted this morning after the, uh, the, the, the shutdown was lifted, scouting the properties realized that there was um, very little effect on property, on plant, on the welfare of guests, and on the welfare of team members. And that was the Chief Executive Officer of the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association, Nurani Aziz. And let's take a look now at the weather. Overcast to generally cloudy with moderate to heavy showers and scattered thunderstorms over the Leeward and most of the Windward Islands. Residents and interests in St. Lucia and the Lesser Antilles are asked to continue to closely monitor the progress of Tropical Storm Dorian and remain vigilant. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. Tides for Castries Harbor high at 2.11 p.m., low at 6.33 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay, high at 3.18 p.m., low at 8 p.m. Seas, moderate to locally rough, with waves 5 to 8 feet or 1.5 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to continue to exercise extreme caution due to rough seas, swells and gusty winds generated by Tropical Storm Dorian. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.51 a.m. And that brings us to the end of our special edition of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.